This is Andy Purewell for Boxing News. I'm joined by ring legend Bernard Hopkins here in New York. Bernard, firstly, how are you? I'm great. I'm great here in New York City. Uh, you know, with things go down, but I'm great. How are you? How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Um, it's good to speak to you. I am very excited, yeah. Um, you spoke at depth yesterday about kind of Ryan's approach to this fight and the, the question marks around his behaviour. So away from that, when he steps between the ropes, how does he have his hand raised? What does he have to do to defeat Devin Haynes? Well, he has to be himself. He has to be Ryan. He has to be what got him here. Uh, when you start changing what got you here, then it becomes um, a problem, I think. I think that Ryan being Ryan and doing what he does best um, in the ring, then it would manifest himself later. And I think that what makes it even greater is because of the soap opera leading up to the fight, the, the drama, uh, it's going to make it even sweeter. So to me, um, this definitely hasn't been a boring promotion. Everybody's been busy. With the promotion itself and, and with Ryan's approach to it, provided it is all just him promoting the fight and it isn't something more serious, have you enjoyed it if that true, turns out to be true that it is Ryan just promoting the fight? Well, I'm not going to say I enjoyed it and I'm not going to say he just promoting the fight, but what I will say is that whatever Ryan feels that he needs to say and do, um, that's how he feels. And never, nobody should never try to you know, downplay that and take that away because it's how he feel. Just like I felt uh, and things that I feel strong about. So I respect what, what he feels strong about and what he stands for. And to me, all that goes out the window when he becomes victorious in, in, on Saturday. Ryan, one of Devin's best attributes is his jab. How does Ryan go about negating that and working around it? He don't get hit with it. I mean, I don't have a magic wand or all the answers, but I know that um, if a person tells you his weapons and he's right about that good part of his arson, then I'm going to try to do all I can to avoid it if I was Ryan. But I, I don't think a jab is going to be the end and be all and in, in, in all. I think it would be part of a, both guys' arsons. I think both guys will, will use their jab very well. But I think, I think Ryan got the best jab, though. People are speaking about the weight as well. Um, yesterday, people were saying Ryan looked big, but people were also saying Devin maybe looked a little bit drained. Did, did you see that on both sides? No. No, i seen both guys preparing the way they prepare. One had clothes on, uh, one didn't. I mean, I think they're, looking at, they, they're taking it too serious about one guy smiling and the next guy's not smiling. The other guy, I think it's just basically conversation that people want to have because they're bored. I think that when you talk to a guy like myself, Bernard Hopkins, or anybody else that know, um, everybody got their own rituals, and they're different. It's not, nothing unusual that I haven't seen. If Ryan's successful on Saturday night, Bernard, in if terms what? of if Ryan's successful on Saturday night, where would this rank in terms of a Golden Boy fighter coming out on top in the fight? In your entire time with Golden Boy, where would this rank as a victory for Golden Boy? It would rank first for him. For us, it would be a good shot in the arm, but I think it's more beneficial to Ryan than, than ourselves. I just want to get thoughts on Canelo Munguia as well. How does Jaime go about defeating somebody you guys will know well in Sal Canelo Alvarez? He hoped Alvarez get old that night. Have you seen Canelo on the decline? We all decline as we get older. You just got to either camouflage it well or you got to... Um, bail out when it's time. We all not the same, and Canelo's not the same as he was last year, just like you can't say he'll be the same next year. But right now, as we speak, he's beatable, and the young lion is looking at the old lion, or the lion that's in the now, want that spot. It happens in corporate America, it happens in sports, and it happens in life. Look over your shoulder, you're going to see a young whippersnapper behind you with a microphone and you're going to be scared as hell. What's the difference, man? Either you're going to defend your position or you're going to surrender. I say you fight and let the chips fall where they may lay if you're that big lion like Canelo is. 
just how easy this is to do an interview and get educated at the same time. Sorry, but no, you've, you've pumped me up now. <laughs> Don't try me, though. No, no, <laughs> I wouldn't want to yeah, do I'm that. Shape. Yeah. I'm four pounds over that weight that I fought seven years ago. Only four pounds, and two pounds are close. So I'm really two pounds. No, I certainly do. I wouldn't want to get on your wrong side. <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> Bernard, listen, thank you. I know the press is about to start. See you soon. Respect.